What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Chicken Ball and Alley, brought to you by SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, RK Motorsports Consulting, Earl Ramey Racing Engines, and Pro Fab Hitters and Exhaust. What's going on, everybody? I'm David. I'm Sterling. What's up? What's going on with you? You you, you making it? You was all sick sick up last uh, week. You making it? Uh, yeah, I'm surviving. I did not realize that the flu was still a thing, but it is. And <laughs> it, it, it is it is very active. It came it came back. It came back. That's what it was. It definitely did. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I spent uh four hours Wednesday at the uh, doctor's care, and um and yeah, they told me that uh I did not have COVID good i didn't have strep throat and all that but i did have flu so um and a double ear infection also so you know it was just wonderful marvelous <laughs> yeah and uh but yeah i'm good i'm good to go man we're getting better still sinus mess i'm sure you can tell what i sound but um yeah um glad that the the, the, the aching man great day dude the aching was <laughs> That oh, was I bad. Bet. My my fingertips were hurting, bro. I bet so. That stuff ain't no no fun. It's it's really funny, and I know some people's gonna be like, "It ain't got nothing to do with it. it ain't got nothing to do with it at all." Um, I've had flu, the flu, twice in my life, and both times was the only two times I've ever gotten a flu shot. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so I have decided myself. I don't want a flu shot. <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. but I know them two times I had it, it was awful. Yeah, it was bad. It really was. I've had I've had COVID twice, and I tell you what, the flu was right up there with it. Yeah, I I have too, and 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 this is just my experience. I know some people's a lot worse. So I'm not t- discrediting any of that. I know some people's a lot worse, but I would take my version of COVID any day over the flu that I had yeah. anyway. I agree. So, I 100% agree. So, uh, uh, I, I want to go ahead and start off by first saying, um, hey, Kale, Kale Maven, what about them Gamecocks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how he's messaged us earlier in the day on Saturday. You know, like, okay. Yeah. All right, All right well, shots fired. I, shots fired right off the bat. I know. Before they even started the game, I was like, all right, well, that's okay. I didn't really have. Honestly, I didn't have much uh, backbone to stand on <laughs> from from what uh, the game costs have showed me so far this year. But you know, I was like, well, I don't want to get I don't want to get cocky, and because you know their starting quarterback was out, and they had some offensive linemen out. So I was like, well, you know, it could be a good game for us, and it turned out that way. So that was that was pretty good. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Twenty four fourteen. Final score. Yep. Gamecocks win. And so it's like, enough, man. I, th- I think, I think Sterling and Kale both were asleep when I texted it because I just got home from racetrack. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't know. It's about 1130 or so. I'm just like, game. And me and Sterling do that. And, <laughs> or one of us say game, the other one say Cox. And it was on a group message with Kale. So, so, uh, yeah. there you go. He Kale. might have been a little confused to start with, but he got it. He got it. <laughs> the next morning when I responded. <laughs> Oh, fun, fun, fun! <laughs> I just, I, I, I honestly, um, I know our game calls hadn't played me, but I can't even believe we're only uh, f- we're, we're four and two actually, <laughs> ain't it? Yeah, Are I you, mean, uh, yeah, four and two, yeah, right? four and two, yeah, yeah, yep. We got a off week this week, and then uh, Texas A and M come um, to to Columbia and play. So we'll see. I don't know. They they played Alabama pretty hard, but yeah, they you know, who knows? Nobody knows, but uh. I mean, I think Tennessee's the team to beat right now. It looks like, eh? Think so. They look pretty tough. I I do, man. They got to play Georgia, and I think they got to play Alabama as well. So, well, uh, they got a tough schedule, but we got to play them too. So, uh, maybe they'll be banged up by the time they come. <laughs> by the time we play them, that's typically what we hope for. We hope for a uh, few people to be out, you know, so we can, yeah. <laughs> we can uh we can do something. I don't know. No, it's so funny. Um, Carolina every year, and. What was it? 2010, I think it was. It was a while, while back. Uh, Alabama was on top of their game then, and and we beat Alabama, and mm-hmm. and then turned around and lost to Kentucky. 
<laughs> yep. And when Kentucky was not 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 that great at all for <laughs> yeah. the football team. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, just yeah. You never know about it. And, and they keep you know we keep changing coaches and uh, don't get me wrong I think coaching's got a lot to do with it but it's just we're consistently uh, inconsistent. inconsistent yeah so I don't know but yeah. anyway well what about your rest of your week other than uh, laid up in the house sick there what do you have going on yeah I laid up a good bit um for sure um uh let's see what else did I do <laughs> um. Let's see. We we talked with a barn builder a little bit. Finally, trying to get that lined up. Trying to get a barn built. Um, so got to talk with him some over the weekend, and uh, he's lining up some stuff for us to look at. So hopefully, uh, that'll start coming into play here pretty soon. Just get um, you some Amish folk down from like Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I mean, they build some pretty they do it big quick, old bro. barn. Yeah, they do it quick. They they have like a hundred of them out there, and they'll move it anywhere you want. Yeah, pick the whole thing up, move it wherever you want to put it. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pretty crazy for sure, but yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I'm I'm excited about it, and I know Mary Stephen is as well. So, um, looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, we we sat around and grilled out a little bit and watched the uh, Gamecocks Saturday night, and then uh, and then headed to church Sunday and went to Mr. Jackson's seventh birthday party. Yeah, Jackson's birthday was was Saturday. He turned seven years old and had a little shindig dig for him. Not much, but. A little bit of something. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Um well cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well we uh nah we didn't have much going on ourselves. Uh last week we did have a uh Miracle League game last Thursday night. Uh Jackson played and <laughs> this little boy oh I say this little boy, I don't know how old he was. Um uh, he was a younger fella, I guess. Um one of the players on on uh, the opposing team, I guess we'll say, um, he has down he has Down syndrome, um, but he's a good little baseball player. And I'm like, man, you need to be on a a, a big team. <laughs> he was <laughs> his batting stance and all. I mean, man, he was good, and he hit the ball. Now, I saw in the first couple of innings, he hit the ball, and I mean, it was you know out in the air right at the fence he going for a home run and, oh. I, and I didn't happen to be right you know in the I think it was 30 and whatever I was standing over towards first base well he hits a ground ball a hard ground ball and he comes running up to first base I say third I was standing towards first base I'm sorry um anyway he hits it and uh he comes running over there to first base and I'm standing there. I said, "Man, I, was, I says, good hit, good hit, buddy." He said, "He throws his hat down on the ground." He said, "What a good hit! It was on the ground." <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I, said, I said, "Well, you hit it hard, though. I ain't hit it hard. It's on the ground. I ain't hit hard enough." <laughs> said, all right, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man. Hey, hey. At least he's, at least he's trying, man. He's trying. Oh, hard. he was trying hard. He was trying hard. I was. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, that's that's the kind of uh, kind of deals you get out of the Miracle League. Um, if you got one close, if if any of you out there got one close to you, uh, be sure to head out and catch a Miracle League game. Um, one of the biggest blessings you'll ever get, and, and probably the most smiling faces you will ever see in one place. Uh huh. Uh huh. They uh they have fun out there for sure. Yeah, definitely um, do. Yeah, speaking of, we got a game tonight. <laughs> After I finish this up, we go on to a game tonight <laughs> at seven o'clock. Okay. So, be one of us. He's only got a couple more to go. I think two more to go. So, winding it down, but we have fun out there for sure. And what was really funny last week is um I didn't know it um just because I'm normally over on one side um <laughs> another racer is, is the announcer out there. Uh, Matt Bridgen, uh, he's over there, and I end up getting talk with him and stuff. And he he runs some or he runs Earl Ramey Racing Engines and all that stuff. And he's like, "Yeah, I know you guys." I was like, "Oh, sweet, <laughs> cool." So it's a small world for sure. Yeah, it definitely is, man. And speaking of listens, I do want to say real quick, I posted it up on social media today. Uh, 
far as our actual um, podcast li- listens, if you listen on a on a, uh, a a streaming app, this doesn't count like YouTube or anything like that. If you listen on a streaming app, you are one er, that has listened to. Uh, actually, we hit it last week. We hit twenty thousand now plus uh, downloads or streams of Chicken Bone Alley podcast listens. So that is it's crazy. Uh, man. That's crazy. Like I said, that's not counting YouTube at all or anything like that. So uh, it probably, I don't know, I ain't going to say double that, but probably another few thousand on top of that. So I want to thank all of y'all for listening out there. That's that's uh, that's wild to me. Um, it is. I'm, I'm very much surprised that people actually want to hear us talk. But that's <laughs> cool. I, hey. <laughs> Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, sir. Um, Absolutely. We no, appreciate it. We appreciate y'all choosing us to listen to. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's fun. That's fun. Uh, but yeah, like you said, uh, well, we ended up uh, racing on Saturday, raced over Dillon Motor Speedway. I'll get into that in a little while. It was a long day. Um, but we had went to church in Jackson's birthday party there Sunday at, uh, at Greenwood Park. You know, let, let me tell y'all something. Our parks around here, they're pretty cool. Um, there's certain parks. That it's all owned by the county here, Florence County. And they, um, you can rent any of them out to uh, to have parties at or anything. But there's certain ones that they charge you to rent out. And certain ones that are smaller that they don't even charge you to rent out. But the ones they don't charge you are just kind of first come, first serve. Which is what... Greenwood Park is, which is where he also plays in the Miracle League, baseball, t-ball. Um, and that's where Cole plays, too. Um, mm-hmm. But but it's a smaller little park area out there. Uh, they got some swings and slides and stuff, but it's not nothing huge. And, and so they don't charge you, but they have a picnic area right beside with some grills and stuff at. Well, you know, when I come to the park, normally I'm not thinking, you know, grilling and all that stuff i'm thinking you know even if we have a birthday party we're we're gonna have some cake some snacks and drinks about it you know which is what we did well apparently somebody <laughs> the day before had them a party of some sort out there and they went big on it they went big they didn't go big on the venue apparently because it was for free but they went big oh, they, they saved had <laughs> They had crab legs galore because there was crab leg shells out there everywhere. Um, oysters, all kind of. They had a seafood buffet out there, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were everywhere for sure. I was like, man, I said, that's what I want to do is I want to buy a bunch of seafood and let's gonna go to the park and eat it. <laughs> let's have a bunch of people out there. That's how you do it, man. Yeah. I guess so. I guess so. I guess the uh I guess crab legs and everything's probably so high right now, which they are. They're they're so expensive right now. You can't afford to have a big place to eat it at afterwards had to have somewhere free to go. Exactly. Oh, so that was funny. That was funny. Um so, yep. That was uh that was pretty much the extent of our weekend beyond uh our racing there, and like I said, we'll get into that here in a few minutes or whatever. Um, well, I I reckon I can go ahead into that. Um, we uh, it was a long day at track. Um, we decided after the last race over there, we led a good bit of the race. Uh, just started getting looser and looser off the corners, and. So we decided we wanted to try to. We can't get any tires still. Uh, that's that's out of question. Um, so it was like, all right, let's match up a, another set of tires. Uh, see if we got something with a little more, you know, a little more rubber on it that that can match up, measure right, you know, how we need. And so I thought we were thought we were going in the right direction. We Pulled every tire out the trailer. We put every tire to the pressure we run on the outside. 
measured it all, then pulled them back to the pressure. We run them on the inside, measured them, trying to get a stagger where we wanted it, and uh, and you know certain amounts of of newness, I guess, tire rubber more in certain spots on the car, and so we, like I said, we matched up a set of tires and thought we were headed in the right direction. Uh, we had our right side tires had good rubber on them. Uh, the durometer reading on them was probably better than, or, which is, you know, lower. They're soft, a little bit softer, cause, just because they got more rubber. Um, but they were softer than, than the rest of them. So I was like, man, this, this might be a good set. This is what we need. We need something to soften up a little bit, you know, keep us some good bite throughout the course of the race as we go longer runs. Well, get out there to practice, first practice. This thing is pushing pretty bad. We changed just a little bit on it. So let's run back out there and just try this out. Go back out there. It's pushing worse. So I was like, man. I said, Fortunately, the two outside tires we had, they measured uh, pretty much the same. So I was like, let's let's just, I want to try it. I said, let's just swap right front, right rear. Swap them out. See what happens. Well, I go out there, and it's so loose I can't drive it. And I was like, all right, obviously it's that tire that is now on the right rear is just awful. It's, yeah. it's terrible. Um, so I had to go on trailer because... Uh, the size tires those were I couldn't didn't have anything else match up so I had to match up a couple more and we were like let's just take this tire because and the bad thing is that tire had probably more rubber on it and was a softer tire than any tire on the car but it has zero bite in it why I don't know make zero sense just a bad tire apparently just one that for whatever reason the rubber <laughs> does not rubber don't meet the road i guess they say yeah i don't know why so anyway we pretty much matched up a whole another set of tires i think all but one tire we changed on the car um went back out there got got it a lot closer a whole lot closer i actually went out there and we were second fast in practice um Wait. so it was all right Changed just a little bit. We were still a little loose off, so we was like, "Man, let's let's move just a little bit." And what we did to the car in no way should have tightened it up at all. But for whatever reason, the car got really, really tight again in the heat race. Started fourth, ended up finishing fourth in the heat race, and I finished fourth in front of uh, our buddy Connor Lee by about. An inch, literally. He was he was ahead of me, and uh, he he was on the he was on the bottom. We ran too wide for the last two or three laps of the heat race, and he had me for the, like the last two laps. I just went in, turned three or four. I said, "I'm gonna try to get him on the outside," and I somehow managed to squeak it out. I think I held him down just enough. He probably got a little loose off the corner or something, but it was just for fun for the heat race. So right. ended up starting fourth. Um, but it the car got tight again. So I started talking with a good friend of mine, Chad Webster over there. He helped us out some, and he's like, "Man, I th I still think you are fighting a tire on here." He said, "He said what you did to it in no way should have ever tightened the car up." He said, "I think you got a tire that's getting hot and just not working too." So I changed two more tires. Well, we started racing fourth. Um, guy started second. Did not get a good start at all. Um, and I was boxed in behind him. Uh, we fell back to six, just being behind him. But the top six were like a freight train. I mean, just everybody's running the same time, just going. Well, I finally am able to get around uh, that car for fifth. And I'm running along in fifth, and I'm actually running down. Uh, they had put a little gap between us. I mean, 
I don't know, quarter straight away or so. So I'm actually, I passed him and I'm actually running him down. I'm actually catching him little by little. Not real fast, but little by little. But I didn't have enough time to do anything. We went caution free. But all of a sudden, about three laps ago, I think it was, I noticed a car kind of felt like it might have been slowing down just, just a touch, not much. But then all of a sudden, I'm going down the straightaway, and it just it it loses fire on a cylinder, just lost a cylinder. Um, I think I hadn't even pulled it apart yet, honestly. And I think maybe it might just be a spark plug, actually. And No, I wasn't just lazy and didn't pull it out. The way our motor is, we got head fans and all this other stuff on top of it, so it, it's a little bit of a process, and I wasn't about to mess with it Saturday night. So we had to fall out. With like two laps to go, with a pretty bad skip there. So, is what it is, I reckon. Can't have that. Yeah. So anyway, I guess I'll have to be uh, tearing into it this week and seeing what's going on. But like I said, I think it's a. I think we just got a just a plug or wire or coal something something ignition related the way it the way it acted because I come in and uh. I just clutched it and floored it, and it ran right up to the rev limiter just fine. It was just kind of why it was under a load. That, yeah, that, so it didn't act like it was before, earlier in the year. No, no. That was kind of popping around on all cylinders. This is just, I could tell it was just one cylinder doing it. Yeah. Nah, so. Right. I don't think it's too big of a deal, but just something else, you know. Oh, yeah, something every week seems like, don't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, always something. Always something. You ain't going to know how to act when you can actually go out there and <laughs> race and put it back in the trailer. <laughs> Man, well, I mean, I, I we, we, we've done a good majority of that, I guess. After, after the first year, once we got, you know, that stuff figured out the first year, um, I guess we, uh, we hadn't... We hadn't had too much bad luck, you know. We've, no. I mean, other than breaks, <laughs> we, we fought right. in for a few weeks. Um, now I got that straight, and it's like it's like we'll fight something a few weeks, get it straight, um, then all of a sudden have a good run, then all of a sudden something else happened. <laughs> so, right, I ain't. A, we'll we'll figure it out. It's. Another one of them things. That's it. How many more races you got this year? Um, well, um, I think there's um well, this this coming week, no racing. Uh I actually our good friend uh, uh Andrew Garris at Profab Hitters and Exhaust, he's getting married this weekend. Uh I am actually singing in his wedding and his reception. Uh, singing and playing guitar. Uh, so be up there for that. No racing there. Um, the uh, weekend after that, um, we got Florence. That's right. Florence Motor Speedway after that. Um, I think the weekend, I think the first weekend of November, is the Fall Spectacular at Dillon Motor Speedway. And that will be probably all the racing for me for the year. Um, I would be racing at Florence Motor Speedway again. But that is the uh, South Carolina Charlie Powell, Powell Memorial South Carolina 400 weekend coming up uh, November 18th, 19th. I do believe it is. A bunch of details came out about it this past week. We talked about it also. Uh Chicken Bone Alley will be hosting the uh, the party there on Friday night. I guess we'll say after all the practice and everything, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, pulling the qualifying lineup for the guys. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun that weekend. But yeah, but that'll be all the racing I got. So pretty much two more races. Okay, now that it cools off, it's time to stop. That's what me me and Buddy Chad was talking about that the other day. I, um, <laughs> we were talking about, we were like, 
we raced literally straight through the summer, pretty much. I was like, why don't we start like February, uh, February, March, April, May? Let's race then. Let's take off June, July, and August. Take off all three months. Just take it off. Yeah. Start back right. September, then race September, October, November. I don't mind if we race on up into December. I mean, not not obviously around Christmas or nothing, but I'd be fine with that myself. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I don't know, but but we like to race around here when it's when it's four hundred degrees for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough, then, man. <laughs> um, I I was kind of thinking the other day, and I'm like, and, and we were talking about it too. It was like, man, I really think, and I and I will say, this summer, this past summer was like, it's always hot down here. Don't get me wrong, it is always hot, but we seen more, uh, hundred and ten, hundred and fifteen degree heat index days. Than this year than we've seen probably in a long, long time. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's been a rough one, man. So, but, I don't know. That's probably just how we feel about this year. I don't know. I still feel like that about it every year. <laughs> probably. I don't know. Oh, <sighs> so. So, I don't. So, I think that's about all we got left. Uh, then I think I'm probably going, I don't know what I'm going to do to it. This, uh, I won't tear it down. I, I might, who knows, I might uh, come back with some different colors next year. And uh, Sweet. Who knows? Yeah, maybe you get you a custom wrap put on that thing for next year. I don't know. I might. I don't know. I know it sounds bad, and I'm not trying to be whatever to everybody else. I'm not... I'm not a huge fan of wraps. You don't I, like all the designs? And no, stuff? I don't. I don't. I like the old school, simple look. I like, you know, when I put somebody's sticker on the car, it'd be in... Don't get me wrong, it looks cool when you add it into a wrap, and, and I would appreciate if somebody put Chicken Bone Alley in their wrap, and I don't care if they change it to their colors, as long as, you know, our logo. I don't, I don't care. I, and there's been a couple do that. That that looks cool to me, but I, I just, it's not me. I like it, the old school stuff, when you, you know, have whatever car you got, and you take the sticker from the business and put on the car. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't know why, I just... I guess I'm just old school enough like that. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So, but I may still, I thought about, I, I, I'll throw this in there, I thought about getting some wrap vinyl and um, and maybe doing, wrapping the center section of the body. Maybe just in, in, in like a solid, but it'd be like that, um, I thought about maybe like that carbon fiber red. Yeah, that look good. I used to run red. All the time. That was my color, red and yellow. Yep. So, I don't know. Might go back to it. Who knows? My dad has seemed to like the white and blue this year, <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, hey, it looks good. Though. It does. It, it's it's. I've I've had a lot of compliments on it, and I'm like, this really <laughs> wasn't by. <laughs> you know, we didn't really make the decision to run these colors. The body's just coming white, <laughs> and we needed it on there. <laughs> right. And I had a bunch of blue vinyl. I got I got my own vinyl cutter, and I had a bunch of blue. I was like, I got a pile of this. We'll throw this on there. And it just kind of has stuck, I guess. Yeah. Looks well, good. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I like, and I used to not. Uh, when I was racing go-karts, when we was back in the day, I always wanted... I didn't change much. I changed like two times in my whole time that I raced go-karts, which would seem like forever. I had one body, and if people know how I was on bodies on go-karts, probably by the bat, I don't know. Some of these boys probably keep one longer than I did. I was pretty rough on bodies. And uh, I, uh, I had one one time that was white that I kept for literally i think two weeks and i hated it 
<laughs> I absolutely hated it. Um, and one time I had a black one. The black I didn't mind too much. I I, I kind of liked the black. Uh, it was it was black, and I always had yellow numbers, so I still kept yellow numbers on the black. Um, kind of did and did some uh checkered checkered flag highlights, I guess you say. Yeah. That was that was kind of cool. Um, but I always went back to the red. So I don't know. Who knows? Maybe do something off the wall. Do like a lime green. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Do that. Stand out. Uh, that's right. I guess, and, and I will say, um, and I ain't saying this just to, because I do, I do like the car this year. I just, uh, I was watching some of the, uh, they has, they went live from Dillon Motor Speedway this past weekend. And it was during our practice, and I went back and watched it, and there was, I think there were three or four cars out there who were white cars. You couldn't tell us apart. (laughs) (laughs) And and they never zoomed in on any of them, so you couldn't tell apart. It just looked like a white car out there. So I'm like, I need something that stands out. So everybody's like, hey, there's David. That's right. Well, a lot of them definitely do that. Definitely do that. Yeah. But anyway, 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 uh, guys, I want to uh, go ahead right here and think, as always, and put it out there to y'all, as always, SRI Performance, guys. They are your one-stop shop for all things racing. And, um, guys, it's that time of year. You got one of two things coming up. Either you got some really big races to finish out the year, or it's already your off season. Either way, you need to pump that car up, make it fast, get all the parts in in it, under it, on it that you need to make it do so. So head over to SRI Performance, get yourself all the parts you need to make it make it fast, make it look good, make it make it run good, make it handle good, make it do whatever good. Make it stop good. Go see yeah. our buddy Randy Keene over there. He'll help you out with some brakes on that on that bad boy. Um, But uh, if you go online, get everything uh, filled up on your cart there, go to www.sriperformance.com. Then at time of checkout, go to the little promo code there, and you want to type in C-Bone 10. That's C is in. Chicken. B O N E one zero. Get yourself ten percent off at time of checkout. And you uh you won't be disappointed. Everybody needs ten percent off these days in time. Save every dollar you can for sure. Absolutely. But um so head over there. Talk to our friends over there. Uh speaking of SRI performance, this has been he is a. Uh, He's been on Team SRI, SRI there for a little while there. Uh, let's go to the phone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on the phone now, young man who has, uh, I'm going to tell you, in, in my opinion, probably na- made one of the best names for himself as a young driver coming up uh, over over the summer, really, and, and right on and right on. Uh, glad to have him back on the show, Mr. Peyton Freeman. What's going on, buddy? Uh, just in there piddling around with these race cars a little bit. You know how it goes. The stuff don't never stop. So we uh we had wash day today, so finishing all that up. Them, them things like being piddled on, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it's always something. Just a little bit of something. Well, man, um, I've, reason we got you on here. First of all, I want to congratulate you, man, on um, uh, you know, getting uh, as y'all put it, I mean, just a multi-year deal uh, to drive the number 22, Team 22, Inc. Uh, with G.R. Smith and them guys, man, that is a, that's that's, that's awesome, man. Yes, sir, I, I appreciate it. We, uh, we've we worked hard for it, and uh, like I say, I, I've done a lot of talking with G.R., and uh, and we put this deal together, so you know, it looks really good on paper. So, uh, so I hope it all works out good for us, and uh, we're able to have success with it. Well, man, I believe you. I definitely believe you will, um, um, for sure, buddy. It's uh, it, it was you know everybody 
in the write up and everything was 2023 and on. Well, uh, all of a sudden this past weekend, you end up in the car, man. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't planned for sure. We, I was supposed to race at Talladega this weekend and we decided we weren't going to do that. Uh, and then GR called and asked if I wanted to ride up with him to race at Muskegon, uh, just kind of hang out with everybody. And I was like, yeah, you know, that'll be fine. And, uh, so I drive up to Charlotte and jump in the truck and we, haul off up through there and uh and on the on the ride up there he's like well, what do you think about running both cars um and i was like well you know it'd be good to get some laps you know whatever so uh so we pulled the second car out and go through shocks and springs and and kind of get together what we can and uh heck uh, the first time we rolled on the racetrack was for qualifying we didn't get hot laps so they done a hot lap qualifying so first time sitting in the car was on the clock so uh <laughs> definitely a, a challenge but uh we uh we kind of figured it out throughout the night and i'd say about halfway through the race or so i kind of got my feet under me and was able to pass some cars and uh just move around and fill the car out a little bit so i'm glad we've done it all in all uh definitely wasn't wasn't up to par on the finish for uh himself or me so uh we'll uh definitely get some more laps for we race again and uh try to be better well i hear you there man but it, it but from outside looking in man that's a uh to jump in the car unexpectedly <laughs> like you did, man, that's that's not too bad of a bad of a finish there, and uh, that wasn't bad at all. Um, but that is what uh, not to blow your head up too much, but that is what's always been impressive to me about you throughout even this year, man. Is you've jumped in a few different uh few different chassis brands there and been able to have decent results with uh, well obviously really good results with all of them so far and more coming up yeah yes sir you know we i've been with the, the capital cars there pretty much my whole career and uh and we felt like we needed something a little bit different we had a sponsor step up and give us an opportunity with another car here so uh that's when we got the rocket stuff and i think we've run about six or seven races with it or so uh, and got a win and some good runs with it. Uh, you know, they're all definitely a little bit different, but at the end of the day, they're all uh, they're all just race cars. So, you, uh, you know, we we work on you know a little bit differently to each one, but uh, but we've been able to adapt to them a little bit. And uh, heck, I think going all these different racetracks and things through the summer and places I've never seen kind of helped that also. So, uh, just kind of speed up the learning curve there with all that stuff. So. Uh, all in all, uh, yeah, I think we'll be able to have success with that car, and uh, like I said, just looking forward to it. Yeah, cool, man. Well, uh, let's go back to the summer just a little bit, man. Um, man, the Hill Tour for you, uh, you decided you were going to take that that big undertaking on this year. Um, you know, we all saw the finishes that you had, which were awesome. Um, you know, it, it's, it, w- sum it up for us, how you felt the summer really went, Um you know, outside looking in, like I said, great finishes, uh, very consistent from from outside looking in. But what, you sum it up for us. Uh, I guess my summary would be, uh, it. I agree with what you're saying. It was uh, it was definitely a success. Uh, I'm glad we done it. Uh, I feel like I'm ahead ahead in the driver's seat of where I would have been if I wouldn't have done it. Uh, so I'm I'm definitely glad we done it. Uh, I'd say my summary of it would be kind of unfinished business, I guess you would say. Like, we were able to start the night, like, pretty much everywhere we went, you know, really, really good and qualify well and heat race well and uh, do all of that sort of stuff. Just come feature time, we sometimes didn't make the right calls, or even when we did make the right calls, we just seemed to struggle a little bit uh, on later in the night when these racetracks blow off and uh, slow down a little bit. But, Heck, we uh we learned throughout the whole deal and and got better with it. But uh you know there's still two or three of them that kind of keep me up at night. I ain't gonna lie to you. So uh you know I guess that's what makes you better is uh you know not forgetting of the things that you messed up and at the same time recognizing things that you done well. So uh, we're just uh, trying to do that and uh, you know use everything that we learned out there to to be able to be successful and uh, go forward with it. Yeah, man, I definitely hear you there. Definitely hear you there. Well, like I said, from outside looking in, it was a uh, a great job that you did out there. And um, so so that brings me to uh, now they go, going with the deal with GR and them guys. And uh, man, it it looks like you know it's pretty awesome because you don't see many uh, smaller, I guess, family teams. We'll say um, we don't see many of them out there. You know 
running up front and you were able to put down some put down some really good really good nights and you know like as you said and, and like I said pretty consistent for the most part from what we saw um and then get noticed by guys like GR Smith and and guys that have been in the game for a long time um and and opened up eyes across country I mean your name was going across the internet a good bit man I mean it was uh it was pretty big uh so uh so tell us about kind of how it came from that and you know going on and and ha- what opened up to uh to bring on this new ride yeah so you know when i started that deal it was kind of you know for me that was kind of my goal was it was to uh to be able to go out there and run good and and uh kind of you know get a little bit of attention from it and maybe guys you know reach out like like what happened so um yeah we were able to go out there and do good and like you say uh have good finishes and things like that so uh actually i was on a, a vacation after we got back from the hill tour uh down in florida uh me and gr just kind of got to talking a little bit on facebook and uh you know was going was going to have a phone call when i got home and uh so one phone call led to another and uh you know we were able to kind of go through our ideas on what i wanted to do uh next year and what he was looking to do next year and the years coming. So, uh, you know, luckily both sides kind of matched up to each other. And, uh, you know, thus far, I feel like we've kind of seen eye to eye on a lot of things, uh, you know, with racing or without, you know, whatever it was. So uh, everything involved with, with our deal here is uh, kind of both like we want it. Um, so, like I say, we've uh, we've got along really good and had a good relationship. Uh, hopefully that continues. For sure, man. And that's uh, it was pretty cool to see uh... – it, that, that y'all even put out a multi-year deal there which is uh which is kind of unheard of in in dirt racing anymore you don't see much of that so that's that's really yeah. cool yeah i mean that it, it's kind of part of what we're trying to do there you know i think it's it's obvious that uh i don't have as much experience as a lot of these guys uh but heck we're working to do everything that we can to get it um so you know, I think uh, next year I don't see no reason why we can't go out there and contend for races and uh, and even even you know uh, have a good finish there in the point standings uh, with whatever we decide to do. So uh, if we run a uh, national series there, you know, I feel like we can contend for races and uh, and contend for points. So uh, like I say, uh, the multi-year deal of it, the part of that is just uh, if we can go out there next year and do good, and uh, you know the years coming we know should be better was just uh, getting that experience and seat time and uh, at all those new places and learning these cars and all that stuff. So. Uh, I think we're looking to build a big picture here with this deal. That's good, dude. That's smart thinking, man. Smart thinking. Glad to see it, man. Well, uh, well, what you got coming up here for the rest of the year this year? So this coming weekend, we're going to go down to Swainsboro uh, for the 10,000 to win race there. Uh, we're going to hit that. And then <clears throat> the following week, I'm going to try to go to Why Not Mississippi for their fall classic. Uh, it's a race that I've always wanted to go to. I just – Never really got the chance to with uh, high school football and things like that. So uh, it worked out this year to where we uh, we got a spot open and schedule for it. So I'm looking forward to going out there to that place. It seems to always race really well. So uh, we're going to go out there and hit that. And then uh, I think after that, we're going to gonna kind of switch our attention over to, to the new deal there. And I'm going to uh, park my car for a little while and uh, and switch my attention over to that deal. So uh, getting prepared for uh, speed weeks and whatever's to come. There you go, man. There you go. Well, uh, I know you've had a uh, a lot of help this year and uh, a lot of a lot of people out there to thank. Who are you got to thank, man? Uh, for sure. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't have uh, done any of this without my mom or dad. Uh, huge supporters of mine. Uh, just thankful for everything that they've done for me and been able to provide me with. Uh, to be able to, to do this stuff and uh Coltman farms is a huge part of our program uh he came on a few years back and uh, he's, he's been a really big asset to our team so huge thanks to him um shelton trucking uh colin signs dirt car lift stilo helmets uh k1 race gear um krc power steering uh chatham and son tile he takes care of uh, all of our wraps and everything like that so a huge shout out to him uh, Penske Rush Shocks has done a lot for me this year. Thankful for them uh, with all their support and everything, even out on the road, uh, taking care of us when we need things. So uh, we got a lot of good people, man. Just uh, thankful for each and every one of them. Uh, Miss Tanya with NPM has uh, done a phenomenal job uh, on her part with helping me with things uh, that I need. And 
uh, you know, just everything that she does is a really big deal. People don't realize a lot of things that she has a hand in. So uh, just super thankful for her. Um, my guys, uh, Kason, uh, he worked his tail off, man. I, I couldn't have done any of this without his help. So uh, huge thankful, huge thanks to him. Um, Cornet Race Engines, uh, this thing, you know, never gave a problem. We've got uh, got multiple engine combinations that we run, and uh, they all run really good. So uh, just, uh, you know, huge shout out to them. Uh, man, uh, like I say, there's a bunch of them. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but, uh, but you know, just thankful for each and every one of them. For sure, and I want to go back real quick. You talking about the MPM there and Tanya over there at MPM? Um, man, they're, they're, she's a huge help for us as well. Um, tell tell everybody we we kind of harp on it each week on here about you know the things that she can do for drivers and 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 how to help advance your career. Uh, give us a little testimonial as you will. You know, kind of some of the little things that she does that she's helped your career. Oh uh, well. Obvious, obviously one of the big ones is this ride. Uh, you know, I think I think she was instrumental in, in you know, kind of helping me get there. Just, uh, you know, people don't realize how big of a, a deal it is to get your name out there. You can go out there and run good and do all these great things. And, uh, you know, if nobody knows about it other than the people at the racetrack, then, uh, then I mean, nobody knows. So, uh, you know, she's done a phenomenal job of helping me get my name out there and uh, helping me get help with products and uh, sponsors and things like that. Uh, you know, and on top of all that, she's been a really great friend. So uh, just super thankful for her. Good deal, man. Good deal. And we are as well. Well, man, I sure appreciate you coming on, hanging out with me for a little while this afternoon. Um, but, uh, man, I can't wait to, uh, to see what happens with you the rest of this year with the races you got coming up, but, but really looking forward to watching you in the next year and the years coming. Um, I imagine we'll have you back on here quite a few times talking about some big wins. Hopefully, man. Yes, sir. I surely hope so. Uh, like I say, it, everything, uh, looks good on paper. So hopefully we can put that on the dirt and make it look good. Also. Well, there you go. There you go. Good deal, man. Well, man, like I said, I sure appreciate you coming on with me and, uh, I'll be talking with you soon. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Peyton Freeman. That is a uh, as a name, I do believe, boys and girls, y'all will be hearing for a long, long time. Because he is um he's coming up in the sport. He he he's young man with a whole lot of talent. And uh he's gone I think he's gone fit quite nicely with uh in the uh team twenty two over there with G R Smith and Gambler Transport. Those guys over there I think uh Peyton will adapt nicely as I was telling him there. Yeah, for sure, no doubt, man. He's a he's a talent. He's a hot shoe for sure. He is um Man, I watched him, as I was telling him there, I watched him, you know, over the Hell Tour, and he was just impressive. He was, um, you know, for for a guy that's come up, young man that's come up in the sport, and uh, like you said, last year he couldn't, you know, years past, he couldn't run as much because he, uh, you know, played high school football and stuff like that, and and had to, uh, you know, wouldn't hit in all the races they wanted to hit. Well, this year they come out. Went hard at it and uh, <laughs> jump on something like the Hell Tour. Man, that thing got its name for a reason. Um, exactly, dude. That is a uh, that's a tough, hot uh, series of races, weeks of races. I mean, that is it. First of all, it is tough to keep up your equipment for that many races. That that's one of the biggest things about it. It's tough to, uh, you know, to be, feel like you're driving probably every day, racing hard every day um, for weeks there. So to be able to do it and and come out, you know, with some great finishes uh, and, and just get the recognition that he got and get the eyes on him that he got there, that was, that was impressive. And uh, obviously it, it, it really worked out for him to, uh, to get in this 22 ride here so proud of him for that yeah for sure man definitely seeing somebody move up and getting the recognition and getting the chances you know not to 
big names and the big money and coming in with all, you know, it's, it's cool to see people get chances, man. It really is. Yeah, especially when it's coming off of talent. It's not just, I got a ton of money and we're going to get in a seat. Right. Uh, this is this is coming off talent talent and results. Um, and he doesn't, that, that's another thing about him, he doesn't tear up a bunch of equipment. Um I mean, he, he was he was real. I mean, they they. I mean, everybody gets in a little bit, but no, he he's not tearing them up on a nightly basis. Uh, they taking track car to track after track after track, and putting it up front and 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 that's why I told him to, uh, you know, jumping back and forth from the well, not back and forth, but jumping in different in different chassis as he's done this year, and being able to adapt quickly to them. There's some guys. And I will even say this, I mean, at the top, top ranks that have done it for a long time, I mean, we'll we'll go with uh, even even Jimmy Owens. Let's say Jimmy Owens. Jimmy Owens got out of a, a uh, rocket and went to a Longhorn and couldn't do anything. I mean, just looked terrible in it. Um, th- there's been quite a few people that's, that's done certain – the same type of things and just they can't adapt to that type of car um Peyton right. is like he said he come from the capital now in the rocket gonna be going to a longhorn um and he's been able to jump in and adapt to all so that's that's impressive in itself yeah for sure like he said just race cars at the end of the day just race cars <laughs> that's it <laughs> jump in and go so best of luck to him and we'll be talking with him Probably a lot more. Uh, he's a cool guy, good friend of the show. Uh, so we'll be talking with him. Uh, hopefully, uh, gonna be knocking down some wins here soon. Yep. Oh, but anyway, guys. Also, want to uh, throw out this to you: stock car, steel, and aluminum. We know we talked about SRI performance a little while ago, and how they make you fast. Well. Go to SRI. I mean, go to uh, pfft, there. We go. <laughs> go to stock car steel and aluminum. Head over there. Get all the the materials you'll need to make that car look good again. Man, I got a uh, I got an old. I guess we'll call it a street stock sitting outside. I've been trying to sell. So if you might look for a street stock or I guess we'll call it a factory stock or hobby stock or something like that, let me know. But I can tell you what it can use. It could probably use. Some metal there from uh from from stock car steel and aluminum. Make it look good again. That's right. <laughs> Which, I mean it was some pretty colors on there. There's a bunch of different colors. That's some pretty multi color. There, there might have been some pretty colors at one time. It's pretty ugly <laughs> right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. It is the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life. And I've said that since I bought it. It's the absolute <laughs> ugliest car I've ever seen. It did look good and somebody decided to paint it purple and black. And, and not even like good looking purple. I mean, it's like bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. under it, the cage and the frame and all is still painted red. So that's not bad. That's not bad. It's not bad. Um, right. It could, but it could use some some work for some. It, it it could use some 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 metals and some aluminums and you know whatever else on the outside. Make it look pretty. So what somebody needs to do is come buy that car for me. I sell it to you at a deal. Motor, transmissions, another rear end, everything, whatever y'all want. Y'all talk to me. But anyway, somebody <laughs> come buy it. Then head over to Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and get you some uh get you some painted aluminum sheets. Make them make some pretty side panels out of it. Make some pretty doors for it, fenders, everything. Uh, and then take it to track when it looks good and uh put on a show for somebody. Um, so, uh, y'all head over to stock car, steel and aluminum, get all the materials you'll need, not just for race cars, guys. We mean for any type of metal work that you are doing anywhere, anywhere, call them up. We've talked to them before. They've had specialty metals imported overnight from who knows where Germany, uh, anywhere. I mean, just, they know what to need, know what you need and can get it. So head over to Stock Car Steel and Aluminum and make it happen today. Um, but speaking of quality metals also, y'all need to head over to Profab Headers and Exhaust. 
Um, I'll be talking with a bunch of guys from up there this weekend because I got, like I said, a little while ago, buddy Andy getting married. Him and Bree get married, and I got to be practicing some songs a little more. I know that because we'll be up there uh, at his wedding this weekend. So congratulations to them. By the time y'all hear us next, they'll be married. Um, Sweet. So I got to go sing. People on here probably don't know I sing too much, but I sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> I sing a lot. Um, but uh, for sure, guys, uh, head over to Profab Headers. And exhaust, get the exhaust for your car that you need, the headers for your race car today. Um, I don't care if you're on dirt, asphalt, whatever. Man, it is some of the not only best performing, obviously, headers on the market. They're some of the absolute best looking to. Um, their slogan is quality that wins, and that is because, and I'm pretty sure Sterling can attest to this, Sterling see some 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 the bad and the good welds and, and and you know the fabrication that goes into all that stuff on a daily basis and these guys put together some of the best especially their stainless stuff man that's some of the best looking stuff on the market um with the yeah. nicest welds out there that you will find oh um, yeah most definitely it's definitely top notch you won't find anything better um fabricators you know Good fabricators, people that are good TIG welding with their hands. It's hard to find, and they definitely have found them. They got them, they got them all up there. I need a couple of them down here, but uh, they definitely got them up there. There you go. There you go. So y'all head over to Profab Headers and Exhaust. Get some uh, – help that motor out that you got. Help it breathe. Help it exhale with some Profab Headers and Exhaust because they are quality that wins. And – um. We want to say for sure, guys, make sure you get you uh, something good to bolt them up to, you know, like an Earl Ramey racing engine. But I'm going to need y'all to pray a little harder for Earl. Earl has done, he just had surgery, what was that, a couple of weeks ago? Well, yeah. now he done broke his leg somehow. I don't <laughs> even know how he done it. I got to find out. Put up picture, showed him in the emergency room. Wrapped up leg, broke leg, and days looking for orthopedic best orthopedic surgeon. I'm like, man, I need you to stay away from this hospital. <laughs> so uh, y'all, y'all gonna need to pray hard for Earl Ramey, and you gonna probably yeah. need to pray for his wife too because she's having to take care of him. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's probably ready for him to go back to the shop. I'm sure. <laughs> but um. But yeah, for sure, guys. Head over to even in Earl's absence, or which he probably won't be absent. He'll probably sit right there at the desk and sit on the chair or wherever he's got to sit, or on the couch or whatever, and still be right there in the shop ready to talk to you guys. Uh, so you head over, guys. Head over to Earl Ramey Racing Engines because he's got a team of guys behind him that know exactly what to do to every engine that comes in these shop in his shop so head over to Earl Ramey Racing Engines get you plenty of horsepower to put under your hood today um you will not regret it um uh, some of the top notch motors out there from anywhere from crate motors to to super motors limited anywhere in between y'all head over to Earl Ramey Racing Engines and get you some uh get you some power under your hood get some of them horses under there um alright well I reckon there was some uh, NASCAR action and NASCAR uh, drama over the weekend. <laughs> Definitely drama. Whew. Um, let's let's go back a little bit. I did see. Uh, we talked about last week how about the safety of this car, this new car, and and what people believe is the lack of safety in in the in the next gen cup car, uh, mainly with the rear hits. And I was listening to, uh, honestly, and, and, you know, I guess this car is so new, it's like they're not wanting to put out a whole lot about it. So you can't just, I haven't actually seen up under or, you know, in the, 
in the trunk area or nothing. I have not seen any actual images of an actual next gen car, frame wise, no. rear end wise, transact. I've seen it out the car if you see it in pieces, but you don't see how everything goes together in the car. They they've showed some digital animated stuff like that. Uh, been you know pretty cool, but but apparently, all right. This is what I'm gathering is the issue with this car, and I will say uh, it probably explains a little better. I listened to last week's uh, Dale Jr. download, um, and he kind of explained what the issue is with the car. What happened was when they went, it's it's the transaxle that's the issue. That is the whole issue. That is why they are having problems with that rear transmission combined with axles, rear axle. Um, they took a, basically, IMSA-type sports car, and they're running it on ovals in NASCAR. That is, that's what it is now. It's not, it's not a cup car, which is, I'm not understanding it really, because, uh, None of those cars have a transaxle that is like that. They all have a standard Ford transmission. And so I don't really, I mean, it kind of actually went, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know cup cars haven't been stock, quote unquote, stock cars in many, many years. But it's like they took it and they wanted to, they claimed they wanted to start back looking more like the the showroom cars, but they've gone even farther away. Um, So anyway, what the issue is now is because that transaxle takes up so much room in the rear that it is really, really, really close to the fuel cell in the car. And so what happened was when they built this whole rear clip, it's a bolt-on rear clip, bolt-on front clip on these cars, center section, and it all just bolts together. Um, but when they built this rear clip, they had to beef it up because what they didn't want to happen was in a crash, the rear end get pushed up and the fuel cell push into the transaxle and bust the fuel cell. That is why the rear of the car is so much stiffer than years past. Used to, you know, with the, what was uh, Gen 6, Gen, whatever it was, Gen 7, whatever it was, the last model of Cup car, if it hit with the rear, it would just kind of push everything down to the ground most of the time. I mean, everything might be dragging on the ground, but it absorbed all the hit. Now, they can back one into the wall, and it don't look like anything's wrong with it. And most of the time, there isn't anything wrong with it structurally. That's because it's so rigid, which is, you know, great from a builder standpoint because, hey, my car didn't hurt. Uh, but there's something got, got to take the impact, which is the driver. That's pretty much the only thing that's going to move inside. Um, I'm kind of with Dale Jr. though, and I, w- I kind of ask these same questions, you know, and I guess this is coming from uh, the driving that I do. Granted, I'm nowhere close to driving a cup car, uh, but our seats, I have a full containment seat in my in my Legend car, which is not what they run in, um, in the cup cars per se, but uh, but it is a very similar, I'd say it's probably more similar to what most of them are running in the trucks. But I can understand where they're coming from. Most of the seats in Cup now are custom carbon seats, which is which are ridiculously priced. You're looking at like, you know, $10,000 seats. So obviously nobody in lower series is going to run that. But what Dale Earnhardt Jr. was talking about was... He thinks they need to start looking at headrest in these cars. And I've thought about this even in my car because you look at the headrest and there is a padding all the way around it. There's, It's a foam um, that is, you know, everywhere in there that your 
helmet is going to touch. There's a foam in it. But the foam in it isn't soft at all. Like, it is very sturdy, rigid foam. Um, yeah. And they're saying, uh, I guess, what, what the way I gathered it was what's happening in most of these wrecks, these rear impact wrecks, is that the guys, it's your natural instinct. You're going backwards towards the wall. They're leaning, they're kind of tucking, I guess you say, kind of balling up and tucking as much as you can, even though you're in belts. So their head is pulling away from the seat. I don't know, probably, you know, just a few inches. But when they hit so hard and that there's nothing to absorb the impact, first thing that happens is their head snaps back and pops the headrest. And yes, you have a helmet on, but the foam, we all know, a foam and a helmet is rigid too. It it, it, it absorbs impact. It's not going to stop you from getting a concussion. It's going to stop you from getting or try to stop you from getting, you know, major brain damage, obviously. Um, but it's not going to take away that factor of your, you know, when something snaps like that, your brain bouncing around inside your skull. Um, so, like I said, I'm with him. I mean, why do we need hard foam around the driver's head? Right. I don't understand that. No. Uh, Still not understanding that at all. Um, I'll put it this way. My seat in my, my Legend car, I try my hardest for the most part. And I don't, I guess I don't really just focus on this very much, but I don't want, I don't really want my head up again. It, they call it a head rest, but I do not want my head to rest on mine because I can feel all the vibration of the car through that head rest. I feel like I feel like I need a softer foam on mine to, you know, kind of make it a little more comfortable. So, I don't know. I mean, but they brought but what what I was getting to at this, they brought out a uh a bulletin saying all this stuff they're changing for the cars in 2023 on the rear clips. They're doing all this, they're changing the bumper, bumper material. Um there's a good bit of changes actually going into the rear clip. Uh I got a feeling it's it's not going to be a final, you know, final uh, fix, I guess you say, for the problem. Right. But they had to bring out something. It wasn't oh, just yeah. drivers getting mad. It was fans starting to get mad because, you know, Alex Bowman's still not back. Kurt Busch still not back. Um, and in all honesty, to me at this point, why should Kurt Busch come back for this year? He has nothing right. to gain. Um, but, you know, when sponsors and fans have paid all this money for him and your driver's sitting at home, um, yeah. to me it's kind of kind of put a damper on the on the playoffs this year. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to, what's going to take place with all that and what else. I know they already announced changes, but I got a good feeling those changes are even going to change before next year. Probably. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, AJ Allmendinger was able to bring home his fourth win in a row at the Roval in the Xfinity Series. So, not surprised by nobody. Not surprised at all. Uh, I'm 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 an AJ fan. I, I like AJ. Oh yeah. Um, and he's going back full time cup racing next year. We got word last week. Um, he uh, which is kind of surprising to me. He um he kind of said before that he was burnt out running the whole cup schedule. So it's pretty yeah. surprising, really. Yeah, I know. I mean, he went away for a while and run some road stuff, and <clears throat> I think he was an announcer, I think, honestly, for the, some of the road yeah, racing the M stuff for a while. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really think he'd come back, honestly. And I guess GMS, friends with those guys or whatever, kind of got back in doing some road course stuff with them, helping them out, and then now he's full-time with that and full-time cup next year. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, he's a good fit for them guys. They, they all get along good, I think. And uh, yeah, I figure. Uh, I figure. Colleague must have wrote him a check he couldn't turn down. 
Yeah, as he can with no problem. So. Oh yeah, um, Matt Collie got the dollars. So. Yeah, they have it. So, uh, yeah. Um, like you said, I like him. I, I you know, I, I don't think he had, a, you know, he wasn't in necessarily the top tier equipment back right. then when he was in a cup car. So seeing him now, you know, Collie's gonna have the best of equipment and, and, and good teams and all that. They already already do. Um, so yeah, I look for him to contend pretty good bit next year, man. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Um then moving on to Sunday's race. Um I went and watched good bit because we had a party, but then I by the time we got done it was still on. I went and watched the the final, I don't know, probably thirty laps of it or so. Um in all honesty, the race was pretty much a snooze fest, in my opinion, for the most part. Yeah. Well, there wasn't there wasn't any cautions of any sort till the very end, right? Yeah, it wasn't none at all. Other than well, and the bad thing is about that debris caution is all right. I have two two thought processes, I guess, about especially road course or any racing in general. Really, is I don't necessarily like to see a caution-free race. Now, do I want to see guys wrecking everything? No, I do not want to see guys wrecking everything, but I don't like a majority caution-free race. It just makes for strung out, typically not fun to watch racing, as uh, far as a fan's perspective. Now, from the racer's perspective, I, you know, I like to see the race play out naturally, and just what happens, happens, and... Just go for it. So if that means green flag, that means green flag. My problem is about it, this sign that they threw a caution for was on the track for pretty much the entire last segment. And they decided to throw a caution for it there with just a few laps to go. <laughs> right. And it was not in, I mean, it was on the track, but there wasn't nobody up there. No. No. Nobody and running nowhere near just, where that's if somebody just came close to it, it would have blew it on off. Right. So it was kind of, I don't know why they threw it. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, we I got to get some excitement the, in there or something. Yeah, yeah. I think they did it for the hype for the, uh, of it because they, they were probably thinking the same thing. God, this is boring. Something needs to happen. All right, well, let's just go ahead and, and throw the caution. And, of course, we'll know what happens. Um, and we saw what would happen. Exactly. With a restart. Yes going three wide and everything else like a bunch of fools, which I don't understand that still. And I look at that like the indie road course, the way they acted going into one there. Well, yeah, it's crazy. crazy. But I want to go back a little bit before that. And all right, guys, don't, don't take this wrong. Cause I've, I've, everybody knows, uh, we've had Tyler Mon on here and, um, friend of the show there, uh, you know, Kyle Larson is a team SRI driver, especially on his dirt side of things, uh, or late model, dirt late model side of things, I guess we'll say. I'm not trying to be, uh, I don't know, I'm not just, you know, I'll put it this way. I think the new car has ruined these playoffs. I do not think you are seeing the best cars make it you know, to the to, to where they need to be uh, at the end of the year. Um, Kyle Larson, don't get me wrong, he has not had the absolute best season. He's had, he's had a decent season, not the absolute best. But literally, I and I didn't see anywhere they hit anything. His car didn't look like he hit anything. Uh, but the rear toe links fall out of him. Yeah, well, he touched the wall coming up. One corner. Okay. He, I, I he, he, did, he did. Yeah, he did touch the wall. But, I mean, still, I don't see where that would, you know, why that, that was a, such a big a deal. Um, uh, I, before that happened, I think he was like third or fourth. I was watching the tracker thing. Yeah, he was, like he was good to go. Third or fourth in points. Yeah. Third good. or fourth. Good to so go. So, you go from third or fourth to five laps down to – Ninth in points. That, yep. that, and that just that ain't that ain't cool to me because and we 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 harp on this every time. But 
there's so I mean like Daniel Suarez, man. Yep. He's had an awesome rate, an awesome year. Was running great, lost power steering, and fell out. Yep. Out of his whole entire Ross year. Chastain, fortunately, he had enough points, but same deal, touched the wall. He did the same thing. Yeah, he touched the wall and uh, yep. So, but, but, but what I'm getting at to you is that I mean, I, it, all your year, your whole year, in Daniel Suarez's case, yeah, Kyle Larson, they, they touched the wall, whatever. But you lost power steering, man. Yep. Things happen. I mean, and, and you literally, your whole season is done because of one incident, one parts failure throughout the whole entire year. Yep. 32 races now, I guess it is. You've done well enough to be consistent enough to stay up there and that one little thing and your season's done. That just, that don't, that ain't cool. I don't like it. I, no, I don't. I'm then, still not in the playoffs personally. <laughs> no, I, I'm not either. And, 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 you know, okay, yeah, team, team orders, team whatever, team this, whatever, but. Then yeah. you take somebody that's rooting and gouging and knocking their way out of, you know, through people on the racetrack, and then uh, Cole Custer starts slowing down and tries to take a corner at 20 mile an hour. Uh, yeah, that was obvious. So, I yeah, mean, I was about to get to that. Hey, that's, uh, that's the next thing. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. That's what, because it's two positions on the racetrack kept Kyle Larson out of the race. And he was up until on. until that last lap when that happened. He Two was. positions on the race. That's not, that to me, that's not. What has Briscoe done deserving more so than Larson to be in the top eight? Or no, than, he hasn't. I mean. Then than Dan Suarez. Dan Suarez deserves to be there before Briscoe does, in my opinion. Yep. It's a. But you uh, just take that. I mean, I just don't get. That's just. And that ain't, that ain't, it's just a show now, man. But I will say, NASCAR did announce to. Uh, it might have been last night, but I know I saw it today. That they are still reviewing uh, Cole Custer slowing down and impeding traffic on that last lap. Oh, yeah. Um, to me, that's not much <coughs> different than uh than the uh. The Clint Boyer spin. I mean, no, it's I, not. It's really mm-hmm. you. You change. You cause changes in positions on the track. So I mean, it's it's not any different to me. No, it's um, not. And 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 I mean, they don't care. I'm sure that Stuart Haas Racing knows knew that there was going to be repercussion, but they don't care because they're not going to change the playoffs. They're not going to take Briscoe out because of it. No, um, no. they just gonna find a team a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, whatever. Yeah, I don't, I don't they think they'll. I don't think NASCAR ever go the route of adding someone else in anymore. When they no. did, when they did that with Jeff Gordon, that was met with a bunch of backlash. Yeah, um, sure. you're never gonna stop team team racing, I guess, and that's I guess that's why you're on the team. Um, yeah, have more chances there, but. I don't know. It just takes something out of racing when you have a guy literally giving up his positions and slamming on brakes. Smoke rolling off tires where he's slamming on brakes and guys run into the back of him and the other guy dropping to the bottom because he already knew what was coming. Yep. <laughs> I mean, man, that just, it's not racing. It's not racing at all. Um, no, it's not. And, and, wild. And I mean, okay, whatever. I, you know, like I said before, team orders and doing that kind of stuff. That's team. That's fine, whatever. But my problem is, is that two positions jeopardize someone's playoff. Yep. I mean, that just that is crazy to me. I mean, don't they got to do something many, different with the points, man. I just I don't like it. Don't matter how many points you were ahead, pretty much coming into the playoffs. No, none of that matters. Cancels out. And they want to be so much like sticking ball sports. That's that's the reason. Uh, I mean, I guess you – let's just use the Atlanta Braves because they're, you know, 
reigning world champions at the moment. Um, say they go in playoffs and they lose their first set of playoffs games. Well, they're out no matter how well they did all season. And that's what NASCAR right. wants to do. Um, but it's so no. much more than that. The difference is to me, it, it can't be compared because stick and ball sports there's two teams on the field when they're playing each other the best team right. is going to win the absolute well, that and yeah but 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 another thing is is there's the, the variables are a wooden baseball bat oh yeah and a baseball yeah how many variables are there on a on a race car just a race car the Not race car about the, and then and then the track on top then, of that and then other cars on top of that <laughs> Exactly. And then you got crew members and you got, you know, uh, lug guns could fail. It, there's so many variables. Exactly. That is why that scenario, doing it like a stick of ball sport cannot work. Exactly. In my opinion. Exactly. You're right. You're right. We agree on it. It's, uh, but I don't know if it's going to change. I don't, I think people like the drama of it. I don't know. I, I think guess they do, but I guess we're old school. <laughs> I just can't see, man. I, you know, I don't know. I, it, again, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for starting over the points, or whatever for playoffs. But from that point on, man, leave it alone. You know. Exactly. Let it play out naturally. Oh. That's right. I mean, you got, you got, you got what ten races there, right? Yeah. Yep. So if you do have a Say a throwaway race. I mean, you can recover. You can recover. You go to the World Series. It's best out of seven. You ain't got to win seven games. You got to win four. Exactly. So, so I don't know, yeah. but I do know one thing. I know that some high octane racing apparel is some good looking threads. <laughs> Sure. That's good looking stuff, man. So uh, head over to High Octane Racing Apparel. Pick yourself up that it, some uh, some new designs that just came out last week. Um, brand new stuff. Uh, y'all go be some of the first ones to have it. High Octane Racing Apparel. Uh, it's some good looking stuff for sure. Y'all go uh, y'all go check yourself out. Some t-shirts, koozies, hats. Uh, in all different colors, shapes, sizes, men's and women's. It's good looking stuff. So y'all head over to High Octane Racing Apparel. Uh, check out our social medias. There's some links there. Um, and go pick yourself up some for sure. Oh well, what is up? Uh, what's coming up this weekend? What 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 uh <gasps> what, what what NASCAR track is up now? Trying to think, God, man, I can't remember. It's bad. That's what. That's how got, much I'm keeping up with it. I know it's got what Martinsville, Homestead, Martinsville, Martinsville Homestead. Is there's there, a mile and a half in there somewhere that I'm missing. Texas or Vegas? No, or not te- Ve- Ve- Vegas. Vegas. God, I'm gonna have to look this up. This this is bad, guys. We're a racing podcast. Lord, I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, that was right. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Up next. We'll see what goes on. Also, uh, this weekend, though, Dirt Track World Championship at Portsmouth. Yeah. That's coming up. We've been there. We've been there a couple years ago. A couple years ago, we was up there with our buddy, Kale Maven. Go Gamecocks. Again, just F- Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just, right. rub, just rubbing it in just a little more. <laughs> um, I see much guys going for that hundred thousand uh, dollars. That's gonna be a cool one to watch. Yeah, for sure. Show. But anyway, well, I got to get to a baseball, a t-ball game. So, what else we got? Anything? Not what I know of, man. All right, guys. Go work out a little bit. There you go. Well, guys, we sure appreciate y'all coming on, hanging out with us this afternoon. Also appreciate all our partners out there. 
SRI Performance, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, RK Motorsports Consulting, Earl Ramey Racing Engines, Profab Headers and Exhaust, High Octane Racing Apparel, MPM Marketing. Um, it, guys, the list goes on and on for us, for, <laughs> which is a good thing. Good thing. I'm good telling. friends. Good friends. Um, also, guys, head over to Checkered. They are the race hub uh, for all things racing, social media. Uh, so you guys head over to Checkered, download it today, uh, put in a little micro-sponsor for Chicken Bone on there. Help us out a little bit. We'd appreciate it. Go follow us. Check us out on Checkered. Uh, also, guys, Ford Bite. Ford Bite Racing apparel there, guys. You uh, Every racer wants to Ford Bite. Put some in their, in their, in their stocking this year. And Christmas presents. That's coming up, too. I saw something today. 11 Saturdays until Christmas. I know you are listening to Christmas music. Oh, yeah. I've been listening to Christmas music for like a little while now. I mean, it's after <laughs> July 4th. I'm listening to Christmas music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been watching Christmas movies already on Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, I'm all about some Christmas. Yes. So, anyway, guys, head over to Four Bite. Get yourself some some good looking stuff uh but anyway guys all right well, we sure appreciate y'all hanging out with us guys and i reckon we will catch y'all uh, on the next one later